Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be doing a little bit of reflection on the recent Bassmaster Open on Lake Eufaula, Oklahoma. Before we get started talking about my experience on the lake, I have to give a big shout out and congratulations to join Ania, my good buddy. He won that event and he did it in his own style, man. Fishing that Ned Meeky on live scope. He is just a wizard with that thing. And uh, I think the all but like maybe one day he's weighed all of his fish on the Ned Meeky this, this year doing that same thing. So things lined up for him and he had a great event. And the same can't be said about my week. Uh, everything seemed to, to kind of uh, go against the way that I like to fish, which is such a shame, too, because I, I really thought uh, going into Lake Eufaula, you know, I heard um, a lot about the dirty water, which brings fish shallow and, and, you know, right where I can catch them with my shallow power fishing te te techniques. I heard that the lake was going to fish real big and people were going to spread out. Uh, I heard a lot of things about this venue, but when I got there, it just did not add up. It did not, uh, you know, kind of meet those expectations. And, uh, and we ended up having a really terrible event. Didn't catch a limit either day. In fact, one day, the second day, we goose egged. First day, we caught three keepers. Um, and if you look at the standings ever, I'll just let, let you guys know. If you ever look at the standings and there's a zero next to my name, that's a legit goose egg. It's not me throwing fish back uh, or, you know, uh, because I, I'm not in the points race or whatever. A lot of guys, you know, will do that. I've done I've done that once or twice in the past where, you know, I just didn't want to show my face on the on the stage. But I made a promise to myself uh, years ago, long time ago that I'd never do that again. So I legitimately zeroed that day. Uh, came in uh, and didn't catch a single keeper. Didn't even lose a single keeper that I know of. There's a couple that that were either white bass or or uh, you know a decent decent bass, but uh, yeah, it was just overall a really really bad event. So the great thing is, all right. So this this is actually a real pivotal tournament for me because. Um, you know, I think I've been living in denial when it comes to, uh, you know, some of the, the new techniques, the new ways of fishing nowadays, and like how important it is to, to learn those techniques, especially live scope related. And this tournament just lit a fire underneath me um, to, um, to start learning, you know, to, to get back to, to experimenting and learning, because I kind of got uh, you know, so hyper focused on the fact that, you know, I uh, that I know how to fish and I have a certain set of, of strengths and I should just stick to those strengths. Well, I've been learning in the last couple years that that, yeah, there are tournaments where, you know, if your strengths align with a fishery, you can do extremely well by implementing those strengths. Uh, in the tournament. And those are the tournaments that you're really, really going to uh, have a good event. But there's also events where you need to have, you know, some, you need to be pretty well versed in some of these other things. You know, for me, it's finesse tactics and using live scope as a primary pattern, uh, a primary, you know, uh, deal, not just using live scope to, to like enhance an already uh, present pattern that I already do. Like I'm not like I already use live scope every single day, right? You know, I'm using it to, to line up my cast, to find a you know, specific piece of cover, but I'm not going out there and just targeting individual fish and casting to individual fish. So that is something that I've got to work on personally. And I learned that in this event, but anyways, that's, we're going to get into a little bit more of that uh, in this video, but there's some other things that, that I wanted to share with you as far as what I learned at Lake Eufaula, more specific to Lake Eufaula, because if you're going to go fish this lake, I think that this is information that's going to help you kind of narrow down the learning curve a little bit and, uh, and help you catch fish there. Cause it really is chock full of bass in some of the areas and uh and also it's a phenomenal uh, crappie lake too um so it is a fun lake but there are some nuances to it that that i think you guys should know and i wanted to share today so um, first off let's talk about what i was throwing in this event what ended up working this week i know that that on paper you look at my my event and it's like well 
I don't want to listen to him as far as what to throw. But honestly, you know, I caught over 60, uh, 60 bass in two days uh, of, of the tournament. I just ended up catching only three keepers, which is pretty crazy. But during practice, I was actually catching a lot more keepers uh, with these two different techniques that I ended up implementing in the tournament and catching all my fish on. Um, my primary pattern was actually a pattern that, that uh, my buddy Chris Kingry with 44 Tackle, who I was rooming with, he kind of keyed me up on this deal, and it was a, it was a jerkbait bite, throwing a Vision 110 Junior in kind of like a sexy shad color, <clears throat> and fishing that, you know, close to the rocks. There was a lot of shad in the rocks, and, uh, and kind of, um, you know, especially in those release areas, and there was also a, a shad spawn going on. So all those things combined made it really good for the jerk bait. So fishing that on 12 pound uh, Invisex, a seven foot medium heavy Versa series rod and a 7.2 to one gear ratio VLD 10. I ended up catching probably 45 fish on that exact setup um, over the two days of the tournament. Um, it, it, you know, yes, not a lot of, of big bites obviously, cause I only brought in three fish but uh, caught a lot of fish. And I know that during practice, that was, that was a very, very strong bite overall uh, and caught a lot of keepers on that, that technique. So just because I didn't catch them during a tournament doesn't mean that that's something that you shouldn't try because it was, it was actually a pretty hot technique. But once everybody started putting pressure on areas, I think that more finesse tactics ended up taking that over. Um, the other technique that I was using is my good old chatterbait. You know, when I'd get in the dirty water, I love burning the bank with a chatterbait, and that's what I was doing. Ended up catching my biggest of the event, a three and a quarter. Uh, caught, caught probably a dozen more fish on the chatterbait, and I was using the half ounce dirty white chatterbait uh, jackhammer, um, which is a new color that came out last year at ICAST. And so that one uh, worked really well in the dirty water, but also worked pretty good in the you know, when the water started to clear a little bit too. So I like throwing that one and also white and chartreuse. Uh, and then I was using 20 pound red label, um, a 7.3 medium heavy Versa series rod and a 7.2 to one gear ratio VLD 10. So that's the, the setup that I use to catch my fish. Uh, again, those are, those are both solid techniques in general, but for some reason in this tournament, and I think it has everything to do with the amount of pressure that the Bassmaster Opens field puts on a fishery. I mean, you're talking about something that's completely different than uh, you, you would see at the, the tour level. You know, when I was fishing the FLW Tour and the Pro Circuit, um, you know, you had 150 or so anglers and you only had two or three days of practice. So very little pressure on those, those fish. And you also had a day off. So you had an off day for those fish to kind of relax. So power fishing tactics played a bigger role in those tournaments. Uh, and then, so this is kind of like what I'm learning about the opens. Instead, the opens, you have four and a half, five solid days of practice in a row right before the tournament. And guys are just absolutely lambasting these fish. They're just crushing them. And even though, uh, you know, some people will shake fish off, there's still plenty of guys that are going down the same exact banks catching these fish. So um, it puts a lot of pressure on these fish. So learning finesse tactics is one way to kind of uh, combat this this added pressure, but also the live scope game. You know, fishing out there in areas where other people aren't fishing, targeting individual fish, and uh, and using light line and and finesse tactics like the the Ned Meeky that that Joe used to win. Uh, those that that is, I'm convinced that that is what I need to be focusing on for the future. Um, and you know, that is, that is kind of, uh, you know, what I think happened as far as the, the techniques that I wanted to use, why they didn't work. So let's, let's get a little bit more into what I learned at this event specific to Lake Eufaula. All right. So let me turn on the screen record and it's recording now. All right. So uh, Lake Eufaula here, it's a massive lake in Oklahoma. 
okay? It, um, it has a bunch of different, uh, you know, rivers uh, coming into it. I'm not, I'm not well versed on all the names of everything, but as you can see here, it's almost like five or six different lakes in one. You've got what I call the dam basin, you know, this area right here, um, of the the uh, you know the main lake around the dam you've got the kind of what I call the release area you know around where the launch is okay this was where we launched right here and uh, and so you got this this part of the lake and then you get up kind of north um, this is where a lot of dirty water starts again you know because this portion down by the dam down by the release area um, those are all fairly uh, clear water areas, depending on how much rain you get, how much uh, you know dirty water gets into the system. The dam is generally going to be, uh, always have the best clarity on the lake. And I found that that just this, this mid lake region, you know, by the launch ramp, that was, you know, gonna be a little bit clearer too. But once you get above this, Oh, I should know all of the names of these these bridges and things, but this bridge right here, once you get past that, north of that, it started getting real muddy. I didn't even go past, I think this is the 40 bridge. I didn't even go past the 40 bridge up here. Um, but, um, so this is all muddy up here. This right here, I think is what they call the triangle. That's still fairly clear water. Um, the, the triangle was actually an area that multiple people told me the tournament uh, likely would be one in and it wasn't hard to tell why that was the case because it was very protected you know you've got these great shallow spawning flats and it, with deep water access um, it seemed like just a really good area and you also have a lot of good current flow um, the water clarity was good so that was an area I didn't practice a lot in there but I could tell when I got in there I was like yeah that makes sense why it, it might go down uh, big time in the, what they call the triangle. Uh, over here, I did not check this out at all. It was also a, kind of a dirtier water area. Um, I fished a lot of my time, at least the first few days, down here, south of the triangle. Okay, so um, this is all fairly dirty water. This narrow um, area, you know, this this was a spot that I, I kind of fished uh, a little bit during the tournament, had some docks down here that I did well uh, on as far as obviously just numbers of fish, not keepers. Uh, and then I, I concentrated most of my efforts during the, the beginning of practice down here, you know, in this, this creek down here, I think it's called Gaines Creek. Uh, and, uh, and also checked out all these estuaries down here and never really found anything that was worth while. Um, but this is all real muddy water down here there, you know, once you get in the back of some of these backwaters, a little bit clearer water. All right. So the one thing that really surprised me about this lake. Okay. And it really took me by surprise because I did ask a few people about, um, you know, how this lake lays out, you know, is it going to fish small? Is it going to fish big? Um, and the answer that I got from guys that know the lake pretty well is that uh, it'll fish big, you know, that you can go just about anywhere and, and catch fish. You may not be able to win everywhere because this, the, the, what I call the dam basin, you know, this area right here by the dam and the triangle and the release area, that mid lake region, what I call mid lake, you could call it uh, down lake, but uh, you know, just considering that it's in the middle of the lake as far as a north-south orientation, um, I, I called it the mid lake area. Um, but, you know, that was kind of known to be the best area overall, which is very common, you know, uh, in, in tournaments. Whenever you have like the release areas, uh, you know, and the most current and the clearest water, that's usually where your bigger population of fish is gonna be. But the the word was that i could pretty much go to the muddy water in all parts of the lake and figure out where i wanted to fish up shallow and i could do well doing that the, it was it was so crazy the first day of the of practice okay i get out and i saw one boat the entire time i started down here i launched from here right here this this little i think it's called elm elm point or something like that 
Um, I launched there and fished in here and then ran all the way down into this creek area down here. And I fished all the way down to this region down here. Uh, and only ended up catching three fish, but I only saw one boat the entire first day and half of the second day. That's the second day I was fishing all this region down here and all the way up this creek. I, in fact, also went all the way up to the spillway of this uh, lake right here. I think it's McAllister Lake. Um, went all the way up to that spillway. So I was way off the map and, uh, and only saw one boat the entire time, which is very rare, especially in the opens when you got 220 guys uh, fishing this tournament. Um, you know, even on the main lake, when I'm running from estuary to estuary, I didn't see anybody, which is insane. That was, it was the craziest thing for me. And then I get back and, you know, I hear guys talk about uh, how there was a bunch of boat traffic. Everybody was on top of each other. Nobody, you, you couldn't get on a point because there was already a boat on it or multiple boats. And that was happening in this region right here. Um, that was a completely different experience. It felt like I was fishing a completely different lake. So what was weird was, even though by all accounts, you could do well anywhere on the lake and people were gonna spread out, um, there was, everybody ended up getting a different memo than I did because uh, they were all in this, this central part of the lake. Nobody was experimenting outside of this, this um you know dam and and a launch uh, region of the lake then the triangle so that was the first thing that i learned about this fishery is that um i'm sure that other parts of the year you can do well in in uh in other parts of the lake but by far the best fishing and the largest population of fish on lake eufaula i and I, i'm I mean, I'm very, very convinced of this, is right here in this snapshot of the lake, okay? This, what you see on the screen right now, this is the best population of fish and your best uh, opportunity to win a tournament on this lake. Again, it we may have been going there in a, at a time where, where, you know, other parts of the lake just were fishing off. Uh, I know that you can do well in other parts of the lake, you know, I, I, the guys that, that I talk to, I know they're telling the truth. I know they, they know what they're talking about. But um, in this particular tournament, this was where everything went down, right here. Especially down here by the dam and right here. This stretch right here. Right outside the launch ramp, okay? There was a boat every 70 yards on this stretch. And it ultimately ended up being one. The last few minutes, Joey ended up catching two of his three and a half pounders at the end of the day to uh, edge out Trey McKinney. And uh, and so, um, and a lot of the guys in the top, and I'm not gonna mention you know everybody who, who was there, but a lot of the guys at the top were fishing this stretch right here. So release stretch was really, really important. But this region of the lake, is where the main population of the fish are. And what I learned in this tournament was that, that there was a couple key things that, that were important. First off was the release area here. Second was the, the type of rocky banks that you were looking for. You know, you're essentially looking for main lake rocky banks. Um, anything that, any situation where the rock kind of comes out to a point and, and it just goes further out off the bank than, than the rest of the bank. Those are gonna be key areas. Um, choke points, like right here, choke points like that condensed current in this tournament. So wherever you had the choke points on the lake, like right here, like right here, like down here, all these choke points really condensed the current and created a, a situation where uh, there was a large group of fish in those type of areas. So if they are pulling current like they were in this tournament intermittently, um, you know, those, those little choke points seem to be really, really uh, a big deal. Um, you know, I know that, that guys ended up catching them off of like brush and, and uh, things like that, um, long points, all that sort of thing. 
Uh, docks did play a role for some guys. I fished some docks, um, but didn't end up catching you know many keepers at all, um, even during practice. And uh, and also uh, bridges. Bridges were also a big deal. You know anywhere you know like you know uh, any bridge like this where you've got um, good riprap and good good current breaks. These all played. Uh, a certain role for people that did well. And I actually caught a lot of my keepers, you know, right here off of that bridge. Um, but um, another thing that, that played a role in this tournament was standing timber. I know that, that some guys ended up fishing standing timber and of course they're live scoping for these fish, looking for individual fish and pitching whatever presentation to them and catching them that way. I think that, that a lot of the guys, especially on day one, were doing that. Um, but the, the main thing that I learned about Lake Eufaula was, was where you need to focus your energy. If you only have a certain amount of time to figure fish out, you owe it to yourself to stay within this triangle uh, release area, you know, around the launch ramp, the main launch ramp, and the dam area. Uh, again, I don't know these specific uh, these the names that that people kind of uh, put on these specific areas, but what you see on the screen right now that is kind of the main uh, part of the lake that you want to focus your efforts on. Um, and uh, and it, it seems to be all about rock, some standing timber. There's lots of road beds that that you can catch fish off of, um, but. Uh, no other time have I seen so much uh, focus put on one release bank. And this this <laughs> release bank was legitimately um, uh, popular. I mean, it, it, I, I've, I've never seen a straight bank that had so many boats on it consistently throughout an event. I'm not kidding. There was 40 boats sitting on this bank from here all the way out to here, um, you know, uh, during the first day of the tournament and the second day of the tournament, and it kept producing until the final day. Um, and so it's just unbelievable to me uh, uh, what was going on uh, in that release area. And I fished there a lot too. Um, but, but anyways, guys, that was kind of the main thing that I learned. Uh, the, why the fish are so prevalent in this part of the lake is you know obviously this is where the the release fish are going to be released you know the the fish are being caught in all parts of the lake and they're being released in this primary creek this is like the main launch ramp on lake eufaula um but that doesn't explain like the vast majority of the fish being in this region especially the smaller fish um yes uh, release populations are going to continue to build and build and build but the reason why I think that this central part of the lake is so important to this fishery as far as having a large population of bass is I, th my theory, and I may be completely wrong about this, I may be overthinking it, but my theory is that because Lake Eufaula is known as being just a mud hole uh, in the vast majority of the lake, you know, uh, other than this, this most central part of the lake right here, the rest of the lake is just a very, very muddy uh, uh, lake. So the water clarity is very, very low, especially when you get some rains, it can get extremely low visibility, uh, you know, no visibility really, uh, where you can't even see your bait dropped in the water in, in, in an inch. Um, I think what happens is when the lake is pulling water from the dam here, it pulls water, uh, it sucks water from all these different arms. And the current, I think, is bringing all the bait fish, all the nutrients and everything towards the center of the lake. And when, in the, I think bass, a lot of bass will follow that, that current that is, is drawing all that bait and everything towards the dam. It'll follow that, that current and then it finds clearer and clearer water. And I think bass, given the opportunity, they'd rather live in clearer water than they would in very, very dirty, unstable water. And so I think that they follow the current, they get to that central part of the lake where the water's clearer, and they decide to set up camp and live there um, throughout their lives. And so you get a bigger and bigger population of fish that stays in that central part of the lake. 
And so that is the reason why I think that this part of the lake is so um, such an important you know area. Obviously, around the ramp, that is primarily release fish, and that's why people are doing so well there. But as far as like this part of the lake, I think it's it's strictly water clarity that is really um, you know condensing such a big population. Um, but um, yeah, so anyway, it's a little bit about the lake. Uh, and just some, some thoughts that I think are very, very important. If you come to this lake, you know, obviously I'm not an expert after fishing one event there and I did so badly that I understand if you don't want to take any of my advice, but I honestly feel like these are such important part, uh, points to make and, uh, and, and some key things that you need to remember when you come to Lake Eufaula to fun fish or fish a tournament, but Anyways, guys, it was a very, very rough tournament on me, obviously, but the great thing is we learned a lot uh, about uh, what we need to learn moving forward, fishing the opens and needing to compete to make the Elite Series. We're kind of out of the points race now. We are out of the points race now uh, to make the Elite Series, so that's very disappointing, but um, we, I think that we've learned enough uh, or learned a lot to help us uh, attack, you know, this goal next year uh, on the Open ZQ. So I have a very good outlook on everything, and uh, and I'm you know I'm thankful for these these learning opportunities. I'm still pissed. I hate you know sucking. I hate sucking on you know twice in a year. You know I've I've had two real deep triple digit finishes this year uh, fishing the Opens, and that just that just you know, really irritates me, but, uh, you have to embrace the suck. That's what I've always said. Uh, you've got to be able to use those opportunities as learning experiences and, you know, move forward and use those, the, what you learned, uh, to push forward and to, uh, do better the next time. So anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, uh, further about um, Lake Eufaula, Oklahoma, send a, me a uh, message in the comments below. And if you have any questions that you want me to answer and do a video on, also put a comment in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you trust the process. I'm going to see you out on the water. Take care.